Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Over the course of time, man-made canals were built to facilitate the movement of goods and people. By opening new corridors or for irrigation purposes. Usually, canals are constructed with a series of locks and dams. The first modern canals emerged at the height of the Industrial Revolution. Since then, innovative ideas and state-of-the-art techniques have been deployed to create some engineering marvels of today's world. In Scotland, the Falkirk Wheel was built to bridge the Forth and Clyde Canal with the Union Canal and reconnect Glasgow with Edinburgh. The two cities were previously linked by a flight of 11 locks. These were dismantled in 1933. Inaugurated in 2002, Falkirk Wheel is the world's first and only rotating boat lift. The wheel's massive structure was designed using 1,200 tons of steel and over 1,000 construction staff. The shape of this genuine wheel was inspired by a Celtic double-headed spear. It has a diameter of 115 feet and two opposing arms extending 49 feet beyond the central axle. The end of each arm is equipped with a water-filled caisson, or gondola, that can lift 55,000 gallons. Each of the two caissons is 21 feet wide and can hold up to four 66-foot long narrow boats. Even though the wheel lifts boasts 79 feet, the Union Canal is still 36 feet higher. Therefore, boats must pass through a pair of locks between the aqueduct on the top of the wheel and the Union Canal. To travel from the Forth and Clyde Canal to the Union Canal, a boat first moves into one of the two caissons. According to Archimedes' principle, floating objects displace their own weight in water. So, even if one caisson is empty and the other is loaded with boats, their respective weights are precisely the same, roughly 500 tons. This means the proper operation of the wheel depends on maintaining an equal water level in each caisson. This is constantly monitored by electric sensors. Two hydraulic watertight steel gates are raised to seal off the caisson. The water between the gates is then pumped out along with a watertight seal that connects the caisson with the basin. The hydraulic clamp and the securing pins that fix the wheel arms while the caissons are loaded are removed, and the Falkirk wheel starts to turn. T 
10 hydraulic motors begin to rotate a central axle connected to the outer arms at a speed of 1 8 revolutions per minute. It takes four minutes to complete the half turn and elevate the boat 79 feet to the aqueduct. The boat is now ready to pass through the locks. This is meticulously monitored by a house operator that ensures all safety measures are checked before starting the process. The wheel can turn clockwise or counterclockwise, but to prevent too much wear and tear, the operator in the control room balances out how often it goes in each direction. As the wheel rotates, a gearing system of three large, identically sized gears, connected by two smaller ones, ensures the two caissons remain upright. When the central axle rotates, the arms swing, causing the smaller gears to rotate in the same direction, but at a higher speed than the wheel. The large ring gears are then engaged by the small gears, diving them up at the same speed as the wheel, but in the opposite direction. This prevents the arms from rotating and keeps the caissons stable and perfectly level. Despite its immense size, the Falkirk wheel is remarkably energy efficient. Actually, it uses only 1.5 kWh of energy to rotate, roughly the same amount as it would take to boil eight electric kettles. In Greece, the Corinth Canal was created to connect the Gulf of Corinth in the Ionian Sea with the Saronic Gulf in the Aegean Sea. Hence, converting the Peloponnese Peninsula into an island. The Corinth Canal was opened to shipping for the first time in 1893, fulfilling a project that had been in construction for at least 2,500 years. One of the greatest engineering achievements the world has ever witnessed. The artificial waterway was dug 26 feet deep in the Isthmus of Corinth at sea level and had no locks. It consists of a single channel of four miles long, but only 80.7 feet wide, making it the narrowest canal in the world. The Corinth Canal is framed by two near vertical 80 degree angle rock walls that stand at a height of almost 300 feet above sea level. At the top of these walls, railway, motorway, and road bridges cross the canal to enable the transit of non-mariner traffic. In addition, two submersible bridges are installed at each end of the canal to allow road traffic to cross between passing ships. Transiting the Corinth Canal is as simple as keeping the boat centered in a long channel. However, large vessels, including those exceeding 800 net tonnage or carrying potentially dangerous cargoes, must be assisted by local pilots and towed by tugboats. Ships can pass through the canal only one convoy at a time on a one-way system. Despite saving almost 730 miles to journey around the Peloponnese, the canal is too tight for the modern large vessels. 
as it can accommodate ships only of a width up to 58 feet and a draft up to 24 feet. Nevertheless, many small commercial and cruise ships still make a voyage through the canal. In the other corner of the world, the Panama Canal was constructed as a dramatic 20th century project that supported the free movement of billions of goods and trade. This was considered unlike the Falkirk Canal and the Corinth Canals, which are of little economic importance as they are mainly used for tourism. Built on the Isthmus of Panama, the Panama Canal bridged the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans, eliminating a journey of 8,000 miles and often precarious routes around Cap Horn. It is one of the supreme human achievements of all time. The construction of the Panama Canal involved a total of more than 70,000 workers. The canal consists of a 50-mile-high sea channel with three sets of locks and dams. There are three dams in the Panama Canal, two in the Pacific Ocean, and three in the Atlantic Ocean. The dam at Gatton, known as Gatton Lake, is so huge and of paramount importance. The artificial lake is 85 feet above sea level and holds enough water to move the ships across the isthmus and provide the locks with water. Canal locks lift ships up to Gatton Lake. Then lower them back to sea level on the opposite side. The original locks are 110 feet wide and can accommodate only Panamax size vessels. Consequently, a third set of wider locks was constructed and began operation in June 2016. The expanded Panama Canal allows not only the transit of larger Neo Panamax ships. but also side-by-side -side passage. Ships move through these locks aided by their engines, including the assistance of powerful locomotives, also known as mules. Larger ships are also assisted by tugboats to arrive and enter the locks. Vessels transiting the Panama Canal passing through several locks to hit a height of 81 feet above sea level. After reaching Gatton Lake, ships start to descend over three locks. The ship moves to the first chamber and the gate closes behind. Eighteen-foot wide water culverts are then opened to drain water and lower the vessel to the next lock. As the water levels equalize, the vessel moves forward to the next step until it is entirely lowered into the Pacific Ocean. The whole process is carefully monitored by the control room. 
Today, the Panama Canal serves more than 144 maritime routes and 13,000 vessels annually and is classified as one of the seven wonders of the modern world. As the challenges for new maritime routes arise, canals with incredible structures and technologies are constructed to shortcut distances and make comfortable journeys possible. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.